Apparently my previous videos in this space have lacked clarity. As a result, I am again turning to peer-reviewed sources to again point out how and why we will soon go extinct. Before addressing the topic at hand, I again point out that I have not predicted our extinction to occur any time before the last day of 2025, contrary to the lies I read every single day. I will again use peer-reviewed papers to indicate that our extinction can happen within a matter of a few years, contrary to the opinions of climate scientists with expertise in irrelevant topics. This conclusion is also contrary to the non-evidentiary belief system of anonymous trolls on various social media platforms. I tried to ignore such trolls, sometimes without success, and I recommend you do the same. The importance of Arctic sea ice cannot be overstated. President Nianisto of Finland said during a meeting with President Trump of the United States on August 28, 2017, quote, If we lose the Arctic, we lose the globe. That is reality. End quote. Nianisto was summarizing the dire state of the environmental situation with his words of warning. I assume the president of Finland is not a scientist, although he is knowledgeable. As one consequence, I will turn to scientific sources that support and clarify Nianisto's claim. As Professor Mark C. Urban wrote in Science on February 14, 2020, quote, Arctic ice acts as Earth's air conditioner, end quote. Science is the premier journal of the prestigious American Association for the Advancement of Science, an organization founded in 1848. If you're doing the math, that's 173 years of supporting and promoting science at the national level. Urban was and is the director of the Center of Biological Risk and also a professor in the Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology at the University of Connecticut. He was merely reflecting an overwhelming abundance of scientific knowledge with his paper in Science, which was titled Life Without Ice. At this point, we can conclude that life on Earth will not proceed without ice on the Arctic Ocean. There will be several contributors to rapid planetary heating in the wake of an ice-free Arctic Ocean. Primary among these contributors are 1. Loss of albedo, 2. Latent heat, 3. Loss of aerosol masking, and 4. Release of methane from the relatively shallow continental shelves in the Arctic Ocean. Each of these factors has been described at length in the peer-reviewed literature. In addition, I have described each of these factors at length at GuyMcPherson.com. As a result, I will provide only a brief summary here. First, some context. We currently occupy the warmest planet in the history of our species on Earth, as pointed out by James Hansen and 14 other colleagues in their July 18, 2017 peer-reviewed paper, Young People's Burden, Requirement of Net CO2 Emissions. I can assure you the planet has not cooled since 2017. According to the opening chapter in the 2020 book, The Intersection of Environmental Justice, Climate Change, and the Ecology of Life by Andy A. Nesmith and seven other scholars, quote, the science tells us that the planet is warming faster than predicted or imagined, end quote. Faster than predicted or imagined. That sounds bad. Actually, it sounds beyond bad. As I have pointed out a few dozen times, the rate of environmental change is critically important to retention of habitat for all species, including humans. As I have also pointed out a few dozen times, Strona and Bradshaw wrote in the peer-reviewed journal Scientific Reports on November 13, 2018, that the extinction of all life on Earth is to be expected from the ongoing and projected rates of planetary overheating. This is happening very quickly. First up, with respect to loss of sea ice on the Arctic Ocean, is loss of albedo, or reflectance. As long as ice remains floating on the surface of the Arctic Ocean, that ice will reflect incoming sunlight, thereby preventing the incoming sunlight from additionally overheating Earth. When the ice disappears and is replaced by the dark blue water of the ocean, then the incoming sunlight will rapidly heat the water. An already overheated ocean finally led the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change to admit that climate change is irreversible in September of 2019 with the IPCC's special report on oceans and the cryosphere in a changing climate. By that time, I had identified dozens of self-reinforcing feedback loops at GuyMcPherson.com, any one of which ensures the irreversibility of climate change. 
the planetary temperature has neither cooled nor, nor stabilized since September 2019. Professor Jennifer McKinnon at the Scripps Institution and also at the University of California in San Diego expects the Arctic sea ice to be gone by next year and only thenceforth develop during the winter months. Loss of Arctic sea ice by 2022 translates to loss of habitat for humans and most other, other organisms within the coming year or sooner as the diminishing loss of ice in the sea accelerates, thereby leading to disrupted patterns of atmospheric circulation, intensified local warming, and profound changes in precipitation at the global level. Of course, the Arctic sea ice could be gone by late September of this year, which would subtract a year from the whole dastardly mess. Loss of albedo leads directly to the next important topic, latent heat. Specifically, latent heat of fusion. The latent heat of fusion is a very big deal. Once we lose Arctic sea ice floating atop the Arctic Ocean, all the sunlight currently going into melting the ice will instead heat the water. It won't take long before that overheated seawater translates into an overheated atmosphere. A quickly overheated atmosphere means the quick loss of habitat for humans and other organisms. I wrote about this topic with my peer-reviewed article in Academia Letters, published April 1st, 2021. Barring a near-term solution to this impending disaster, we will soon be saying our final goodbyes. We will not be alone. Rather, only the rate of change will be sufficient to cause the loss of all life on Earth. When we lose the Arctic sea ice, the temperature will rise beyond our ability to grow, store, and distribute grains at a large scale. That's inconvenient, because the ability to grow, store, and distribute grains at a, grains at a large scale is what characterizes every civilization, including the one in which we are currently embedded. Again, loss of civilization translates to near-term loss of habitat for human animals because of the attendant loss of aerosol masking leading to a rapid rise in global average temperature. No, I did not invent the aerosol masking effect. Rather, it's been reported in more than two dozen peer-reviewed papers dating back to 1929. Most recently, the conclusion in the prestigious journal Nature Communications on June 15, 2021 comes by a title, quote, Significant underestimation of radiative forcing by aerosol cloud interactions derived from satellite-based methods, end quote. As with most scientific endeavors, previous research has underestimated the aerosol masking effect. Finally, the abrupt release of methane from the relatively shallow continental shelves beneath the Arctic Ocean poses an existential threat. This idea was initially presented by Dr. Natalia Shakova and three other scholars at the European Geophysical Union annual conference in April 2008. Their abstract from the presentation includes these lines, quote, we consider release of up to 50 gigatons of predicted amount of hydrate storage as highly possible for abrupt release at any time. That may cause about 12 times increase of modern atmospheric methane burden with consequent catastrophic greenhouse warming. End quote. Notice that an ice-free Arctic Ocean was not required for this catastrophic release of methane. It still isn't. When humans exit the planetary stage, the uncontrolled meltdown of the world's nuclear power facilities will cause atmospheric ozone to be diminished. This will lead to the loss of all life on Earth, as I pointed out earlier in this space with a video titled, Means of Extinction, Nuclear Facilities Implode. With the extinction of our species comes not only the stripping away of atmospheric ozone, but also the rapid loss of aerosol masking and therefore a stunningly rapid rate of environmental change. As I also pointed out earlier in this space with a video titled Means of Extinction, Loss of Aerosol Masking, the latter phenomenon is sufficient to cause the extinction of all life on Earth. In other words, Homo sapiens has inadvertently become the most important species in the history of the planet. We alone can trigger extinction of life on Earth through a variety of means, and we are, unfortunately, through each of those means.